This NFL best ball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Shady Rays. Go to shadyrays.com and use code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized shades. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circle Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, no, no bumping music in the background. <laughs> bump, 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 bump. Hey, we're back home. We are. We're back home. Survive Vegas. Um, <laughs> yeah, awesome time again. Big shout out to the circuit. You heard Derek Stevens. Uh, on the intro drop there. And uh, I I think Derek personally, the amount of, and I just, I don't think it was the heat or him being in the suit, but the sweat coming down from his head when he saw that uh, the, uh, the Bennett, the amateur uh, liability, if he would have won on to win the masters, I think that would have been a a quarter swinging event for the uh, people at the circuit. It's a consistent Reason why, like, oftentimes you meet someone, you wonder, you see those those degenerate uh, ticks, and Derek, when Derek talks to you about the liability, no matter no matter what it is, he's always got that little bit like mm, this, <laughs> like Tiger Woods not going to win, but Tiger Woods still a problem right now. Yeah, you know he's I mean? got he's got <laughs> two phones, which is another classic move. He <laughs> he's got his like regular cell phone, then he's got like the the uh, you know the. The Derek Hotline phone. Have we ever? Numbers. Have we ever brought that up with him? No, we got to talk about. He's mentioned. I was the worried. I, I didn't want to blow up his spot <laughs> if it was like a side piece thing. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, we we have mentioned the 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 tablet thing a little bit, I think, on air. But uh, again, obviously, the big takeaway was you breaking the circuit pool <laughs> rules by trying to snorkel. That that's <laughs> uh, still like I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. I understand why you wouldn't want grown like you can't be a child I, in that I, establishment. I just, you cannot be a child, so I understand not having goggles. But a snorkeling mask is objectively <laughs> funny, right? I I, I, I I get like I understand I get, Colby's people's someone, humor. Someone, someone must have. <laughs> we have to know the inciting incident. There was an incident that caused Derek to ban snorkels. I guarantee you, we'll get that uh, story out of him next time we're out there. But here. <laughs> Today, Ryan, Monday AM, clocking in the old podcast factory. We're here talking National Football League. We're gonna do a uh, best ball draft. Is it's kind of like background noise. These best ball drafts, but a good way to reevaluate where are we on these players. What are the latest trade news? Obviously, big news, uh, free agency wise. Again, I don't even know if it's that big because he's only had 856 receiving yards in his past three seasons. Oh, but wow. The, the boat trip himself, Odell Beckham Jr., uh, has Reese has uh, signed with the Ravens. Uh, a decent deal for him, I think, like thirteen something guaranteed, up to eighteen million. To me, this is big news. I think less because of what it means for Odell Beckham and the Baltimore Ravens, but more. This to me is kind of a sign that Lamar Jackson. Uh, might be figuring out a way to make it happen. I Were mean, those videos from the club not real? Which ones? The ones that say "Welcome Lamar and Odell," and oh, they're at know. like a strip club. Oh, okay. I so I was trolling. But around. I mean, there was a. I, I did see a screenshot of him FaceTiming yeah. with Odell, and he put it on his Instagram. That to me is, hey, maybe, uh, maybe Lamar Jackson is the new GM. Maybe he's Aaron Rodgers pulling some strings from behind. This to <laughs> Why me. Why does everyone love Odell so much? I I don't know. I don't get it. I think other players really love Odell. The young, I think the, he's a bit overrated. He was helpful to the Rams in that Super Bowl run, but other than that, he was pretty he's washed still a good up player. Uh, is he? We'll see how he is I, off this oh, next one, ACL. One hundred percent. When he's on the field, he's going to produce. 
Well, I, I just I think wonder that, how much he's going to be on. But the as field. a as a second receiver, uh, but now he's coming off another ACL, so I I wouldn't be surprised a year off from football and an ACL. What did I tell you before the show? I was glad he didn't sign with the Giants. John Mara out there talking about Beckham. Finally got to have the conversation with the children. Good news, is girls. Odell, we will no longer have to. We won't have to root for him. Is Odell signing with the Ravens if he thinks there's a chance he's going to be catching balls from Huntley? I don't see it. He did that. He did that in Cleveland. He played in Cleveland with a shitty quarterback. I don't think Odell is signing up for that again. And and as much as we've been critical of Odell, and I think he's overrated, and and it was crazy what a news cycle it is. And I understand the irony of us talking about, but I do think it has a bigger impact uh, on the quarterback situation. He's not signing up for uh, Baker Mayfield or whatever you would compare. um, What if what if he was sold a, a bill of goods that included Stetson Bennett? I, I mean, there, if if he, I mean, Tyler Huntley, Stenson Sean, the, Bennett. The do you si- think he's signing, especially this early in the process? What better way to sign a one-year deal and not hurt your value at all than go to a team that doesn't have a quarterback? I guess. There, I I think he's also. This makes the story about this is the biggest story in football. So of course Odell is going to join the most controversial situation to keep his name in the in the news. Guess what they're saying now about Odell and Rashad Bateman, best receiving core. Oda or Lamar's ever had. He doesn't even have him yet. I don't it's look, I we should get this draft started. Let's go. But I, I do uh I'm, are we ready for me to enter, Sean? I, I will be I, okay. I I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for you. I just in case there's any sort of a location services. There is. Oh boy. Hold on. Too much we're 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 crossing state lines too much. They got they got tabs on the IP address. What the fuck? You're yeah. getting held down again, huh? Always allow underdog fantasy to access your location. Done. I feel like I've had to re- redo it a couple of times. I'm going to call it the uh, big, big corporate gambling coming after us. <sighs> All right. Brian Vamp, while I figure out this location. Well, I mean, and just, just to continue to add, I like, I, for Odell to come, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying about he must know Lamar is coming. And and honestly, like if you go look at the internet, there is, there seems to be a video from a at minimum nightclub at maximum strip club where a bunch of the staff are uh, throwing like lit up something in, in the air with a sign that says, welcome Lamar and hotel. So I, I don't know what else that would be. And it, it, if you're, if you're signing and then also celebrating your signing to the Baltimore Ravens, with Lamar Jackson, that would indicate to me Lamar is going to play for the Ravens. So a lot of what we said about maybe fading the Ravens uh, because Lamar won't be there, I, uh, Stetson Bennett getting drafted by the Ravens. There's a lot of things that become null and void. I think once once you decide, I mean, would Lamar Jackson be celebrating with Odell if he wasn't going to be on the team? Oh, here it is, right here. I I don't. Can I put? Let me see. Maybe I can even get this on the screen real quick. All right, I'm in, Ryan. I hacked the mainframe. Underdogfantasy.com promo code. Are you in a draft? No. I'm in the. You ready for me to click? Yep. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Hop in live in the draft. Oh, no. Did you get in this one? I'm hitting. I'm joining now. Oh, fuck. Now I'm in one without you? Yep. Motherfucker. How is it you can't figure this out ever, Sean? What the fuck are you talking about? I'm blaming you on this. No, you said click in, and I clicked in. You were late, though. No, I wasn't. Now I got to auto draft a fucking super flex league. How many people are opening yours? Like, There's plenty of spots. Like 15? Come on in. This is the official draft. All right. Yeah, we're all in here. Well, Party's all happening. If you're auto drafting in the other draft with me, uh, apologies for that. Waiting for eight uh, people. On behalf of Sean. All right. So while we're waiting, if you guys want to check out this, uh, see if we can figure this out. No, I, I don't. I didn't. It does say welcome Lamar and OBJ. Yes. This looks like a Super Bowl party. So we're 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 not we're not worried that this is a celebration of the contract. Uh unless they have a time machine. I think this was at a Super Bowl party. All right, right. cool. It's good that we got to the bottom of this. <laughs> because it, it uh oh, where'd our draft go? Son of a waiting for six more people to fill up the draft. Again, underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. First time depositors. And uh perfect time to talk about Shady Rays. I uh, I don't have my shady rays in studio because I left them in my uh, huh? truck. 
I was uh, took them took the Shady Rays out to Las Vegas. Was rocking them all day, and then I had a moment like, "Oh, did I lose my Shady Rays?" If I did, not a problem. Shady Rays is backed by their lost and broken replacements policy. So again, if you lose your pair or even on day one or break them, they'll fix it. They'll repair, return it uh, or they'll replace it. Uh, no questions asked Wear your shady rays with confidence because uh, they have your back long after you purchase. Again, you look good. You feel good. You feel good. You draft good. Uh, always reminded of uh, Deion Sanders, his draft day fit. If shady rays was around then uh, I'm sure he would have been rocking some shady rays. Cause that thing, uh, his, his kit uh, was pretty fire. Again, shadyrays.com get their best deal of the year. Go to shadyrays.com. Use promo code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized shades. Try for yourself. The glasses are rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Worth noting, Sean. The discard line is open, so we, we're happy to talk to anyone about the National yes. Football League. It's pretty funny. We were doing some decent spots, and it's like, uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Oh, you want to talk football? <laughs> sure, let's talk football. Yeah, All there's right. always something going on with the. Uh, you know, we will be talking NF or uh, NBA playoffs later. Uh, getting uh, Moon off, uh, maybe Terrell as well on the show. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, again the NFL. I was driving around with my wife, and I go, "Do you realize it's only 19 days until the draft?" And she's like, "Man, whoever's in charge of the schedule does a really good job of <laughs> of doling out your Kool Aid in proper." Uh, <laughs> it's proper really phases. true. They, they've. I mean, at some point, we did hear Goodell. Essentially, I, I don't think he directly said it, but the goal was to essentially dominate every month of the calendar year, and so they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we got schedule release uh, coming up. We got a training camp, OTAs, so much going on. Uh, Holland Oates is checking in on the YouTube chat as well. Also worth noting the board. We are full. Andrew Rob checking in, uh, saying, "Ryan, have you been doing any fantasy endurance athlete workouts?" He just started to jog and draft. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> jog and draft. Don't uh draft and drive, but jog and draft is fine. See, a couple we- a couple weeks ago, four months until draft day three. I don't want to make I, I don't mean this to sound like it's disparaging towards people that like to go run and draft. So two things I would I would I would like to say. A if I if you ever catch me doing that, I'm gonna be doing it out in the wild, not in a hmm. fucking treadmill. Two I don't see the purpose of me jogging and drafting when I'm not going to be jogging and drafting on ja- on draft day. Mm. Nor am I going to do that for any of my high stakes drafts. Now, if oh, you, you know ask what? me what I've done to prepare, and the draft has started, Andrew Rob on the clock. If you've asked me what I've done to start to prepare for draft day and just the ne- the 2023 fantasy season in general, well, well, here's what I've done. I've already signed up for something called the Bare Knuckle Challenge. Oh, wow. I keep my mind right because here's the way it works. 28 rounds. The draft is held live. The moment the Thursday night football game ends out in the beautiful in beautiful Las Vegas, wherever the FFPC is going to be this year. I think it's back at planet Hollywood and Sean, you are not allowed notes. You're not allowed a computer. You're not allowed a, a spreadsheet. You're not allowed to whisper to a friend. You're not allowed to do anything except for look at the board. <laughs> so mind is getting right. Obviously, uh, I will be there. Draft day three. Have not announced the date, a time, a cause, anything like that. But it is happening, and I'm I'm guessing Andrew Rob is going to be joining me again. So we're doing a super flex uh, underdog uh, best ball draft here. So obviously, two quarterbacks, uh, heavy quarterbacks early and often. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Patty Mahomes, Justin Fields, Justin Jefferson, first nine QB drafted. Then we got Burrow, Christian McCaffrey. One more, and then Kramer, you're on the clock. It does seem like those top four quarterbacks are a tier, and then that's when people can talk themselves into, oh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe Justin, I'll. Justin Herbert just went. Oh, and why not? Uh, now that we know. You just took Lamar Jackson, who is the only. Now, look at me. <laughs> look at these quarterbacks <laughs> Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Tua, Daniel uh, Jones. <laughs> it really does uh, plummet. Christian McCaffrey's already gone. No, you're in a real tight spot. It's, it, I don't like the end of these drafts. Be honest. <laughs> Jamar Chase. I'm gonna go t- fuck it and just take Kelsey. Oh man, look at you. So you're you're gonna end up with shitty quarterbacks like I did the other round. 
the other draft. Uh, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, go. I mean, do I take do I take Kirk Cousins right now? I feel like there was some making fun of me for that type of maneuvering. I, I mean, again, it's like, do you do you want to just figure it out later, or are you gonna? Because you could still take Jamar Chase. Yeah, I'm gonna take Jamar Chase. <laughs> I'm going a zero QB build in this <laughs> super flex. Well, I, I I just can't. I my body just will not allow me to draft these shit ass quarterbacks. Look at all the purple. A lot of purple. coming off the clock. I am one of two people, or sorry, three people who don't have a quarterback right now. But I do have uh, Jamar Chase and Travis Kelsey. And and the world, the world's letting me do it, Sean. I think I'm just gonna get like four. When you compare quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson and Vanilla Vic on the same team, oh man, oh man! Hey, great morning to be with everyone. Feeling great. Just just paired up Lamar Jackson and uh, Danny Dimes, aka Daniel Jones, aka Dan. Jones. By the way, Sean, I was uh, driving around yesterday and uh, Counting Crows came on, unsolicited. Hmm. Got me ready for football season. Great, uh, great band. Uh, Moon off in there is suggesting Deshaun Watson. I just don't have it in me, man. I, I, I'm just so skeptical of him. Yeah, I guess uh, I would love for anyone in the chat or anyone who's trying to call in or anyone who wants to talk about why they would be, well, anyone who has a positive take on the Browns. I feel like I need to hear it. Because I I don't understand it. I don't see it. And I don't under like when we broke down the win totals, they were second in the division to the Bengals. What am I missing? Yeah, I mean, I I I you could talk me in if no one was on them and uh you, you have some sort of like long shot thing going, but I, I'm a I, to 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 play them I, like at the win total, uh, at their division odds, I just don't see it. I I'm typically someone who likes to pick up the trash when people are fading something. And I just, I really, it's hard for me to see it. I, I don't necessarily trust the coach. I don't necessarily trust the quarterback and they're in a division where it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily seem like they own any of the matchups. And now if Lamar is going to be back in the division, now we're talking about a much different situation in Baltimore. I, I just, I don't know. I, maybe I'll be surprised, but I, I think if nothing else, the collusion talk will end again after another season where Deshaun Watson does shit. All right. Wow. Look at this. What do we got going on here? Sean, you want to update us? Sure. CD lamb, AJ Brown off the board, Austin Eckler, uh, Devonte Adams, J- Stephon Diggs, Kirk Cousins. Someone was able to, to uh, who, who got Justin Jefferson did uh, able to um, match good, him with Kirk Cousins. So nice that's, not, that's not horrible. Jalen yeah. hurts could have stacked with AJ Brown chose to take Austin Eckler instead. Interesting, interesting decision there. As we continually get reminded by the fantasy guys over at the SGP and fantasy feed, ignore the running back, ignore the running back for as long as possible. Yeah, I don't know. I, I Eckler obviously was a machine PPR, but uh, again, this is only the underdogs half point PPR, mm-hmm. and Austin Eckler's requesting the trade. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of weird moving parts around that situation. That being said, he probably shouldn't go, but I, I don't. I, I would say probably not. He probably needs to go in the top three running backs. Mm. I, I think he's going to play in a contract year. I think he's going to play for his money in Los Angeles. And I think generally when that happens, dudes tend to show out. Yeah. And if anything, the coach will certainly side with the player over the organization and help him to put up a nice stat line. I would think. Oh no. Jared Goff goes, oh, but the quarterback situation is <laughs> getting thin. Sean. Uh, Gino Smith available for me. Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, Kyler Murray, Jordan love Bryce young, Maddie Stafford. I keep scrolling down, looking to find a quarterback. I like. It it is pretty gross. How many have has any team gone three quarterback yet? Uh, it doesn't look like it. We uh, we a lot of teams have Let's two. Go. Oh Ryan taking Geno Smith. All right. So your your first three guys are quarterbacks. I'm I'm doing the opposite of my normal strategy. Yeah. Super flex loading up on the quarterbacks. I, I like where I'm at now. Now I can start firing. Uh, also. What led me to make that decision is I don't necessarily love this tier of player because you're really looking at a number of of essentially running backs with a handful of receivers who are probably number twos on their team at this point. What are you gonna do, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Olave. 
That's not bad because you can pair him with Derek Carr later. Later, I like Olave. I think if you, I think you're just supposed to load up on those year two guys, year two, year two, three wide receivers. Yeah. And Chris Olave, if you look at any of the underlying numbers, he had just an all-world rookie rookie year yards per target, yards per an attempt, like just all sorts of indicators that he's going to be an absolute stud. Imagine uh, at the turn going Pollard and Brees Hall. <laughs> it's not exciting. No, not exciting at all. Kyler Murray is available. He is not going to take him. Need one homer play. Give me Devonta Smith. Listen, to these receivers: oh. Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith, Travis Kelsey. Excellent homer picks. Thank you. But just just so you know, duh, we do have Derek Carr. I would imagine the, the next wave of quarterbacks is going to go here in the fifth, sixth round. So you'll have to be ready to fire. Well, that's the other thing, though. But now everyone has two or three quarterbacks. There's only 32. It's also true. It'll right. be interesting to see. Can I get a court? Can can Derek Carr come back to me? Do I want Derek Carr? That's a great question. All right. So I basically have a decision here where do I take a better receiver? Or do I take a stack? I'll take the stack. Give me DK Metcalf. So Gino and DK is my first stack. Yeah, I still I think you're gonna be. I mean, if it's anything like the last draft that we did, I think you're gonna be a little surprised at how these next wave of quarterbacks start to go here. So you're probably gonna have to there goes Carr. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> All right, so if there's 32 quarterbacks and there's 12 teams, Sean. That means every team can't have three. Yeah. Just just doing some math for you. I'm good. If the train couple, leaves I got a couple San Francisco. Of, I got a, I got actually got, I got a lot of options. Derek Henry stacks. in the fourth round. I don't hate that. It's just not fun to take a running back. Especially Derrick Henry. Although again, I, I, I feel like I'm guilty of forgetting that underdog is only half point uh PPR. Which makes him more valuable, yeah. Andrew Robb is in on Deshaun Watson. Says he's a favorite target of mine. Uh, favorite target in terms of a fantasy player or human? <laughs> maybe maybe quantify quantify that. So he, he's saying he has a massive upside. He uh, has three viable weapons. Just ADP is friendly outside of super flex leagues. Maybe a non super flex. I I don't know. I it seems like he's getting hype of um, I don't know. Uh, the only I feel like he's getting credit for past performance, but I I really don't see it. The only viable weapon he has is in his pants. See what I did there? I was so so that all right. So Sean, I was debating Jalen Waddle, DK Metcalf. Which way do you go? I guess if you have Geno Smith, you want DK Metcalf. If you didn't have Geno Smith, you go Waddle. Probably right. Yeah, it's probably close. I don't know. The, the the Pete Carroll offense always loves running the ball, but then. You have uh, DK Metcalf, who is just such a freak beast. He is a beast. I like Tyreek Hill announced his retirement in twenty four twenty twenty five. It's genius. He's seeing Odell over here. He's like, how do I get people to talk about me more? Although I, I legitimately don't think Tyreek Hill cares that much about people talking about. Like if I was comparing Tyree Hill and and Odell Beckham, who's more vain? Mm. I don't know. I, I mean, well, I mean Odell Beckham, he is like the Jerry Rice of vanity. Like, I, yeah. there's not one receiver out there that Randy Moss or Jerry Rice of vanity. Uh, he's the. It's a little bit more to me. It's more Randy Moss because there's the there's the low parts, but then there's the super super high parts in of, terms of, of his ego. <laughs> oh no, he is he's Jerry Rice. So it's a hundred percent. He's the Jerry Rice of vanity. Now, ironically, Jerry Rice not that vain, at least compared to guys like Odell Beckham. So you're saying like at first it was his ego was a four seven, but then a, a four seven speed, but then he his over his ego, career he built his it ego up. you tolerated early on because he was that good, but his ego has outshined his uh, ability for a long, long time. Matt Stafford off the board. Mm. <laughs> really might have to draft a quarterback coming up. Oh. Well, I think you almost certainly have to draft it. CJ Stroud goes. Oh no. <laughs> There's not a lot of guys coming. Hmm, that could be a draft. You have to know when to come. 
If you uh, make sure you check youtube.com slash sports gaming podcast, that subscribe button one, turn the notifications on so you can hop in and draft with us, draft against us, take our cold hard cash. But uh, also check out the Zed Run uh, racing episode we did live from Las wow. Vegas. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Live um, digital horse racing. And uh, yeah, that was that was pretty sweet. Visually, really looked really cool. Kenny Pickett goes. Damn it, he was my guy. I was gonna say, Sean, that that can't that couldn't have been a good pick for you. Uh, looking at this board here, it it it's like there's a cluster of receivers, and I think I have to take. You know what? Kramer on the clock goes with Mike Williams after Jordan Love goes. I'll, I'll share the rest of my debate after Calvin uh, Ridley off the board. He was one of them. <laughs> All oh, right, he this just feels like a brand move, the gambling thing. Anthony Richardson, oh, no. AR fifteen, my first quarterback nice, drafted. Nice. I mean, he would pair nicely with Trey Lance. No, I can't take Trey Lance. Got it. Or can I? Do I take Trey Lance or Jimmy G? Jimmy G, I at least know will play. Yeah, you probably need to put, draft Jimmy G. I need I need some floor guys here at this point. Got Jimmy G, no Devonte Adams, but hey, I need I desperately need some quarterbacks. All right, so one of the guys I was debating is still there. I guess I guess people are scared off by not knowing where he's going to be. I'll take D Hop here. Really looking at Jared Stidham Ryan as a possible quarterback so, option. Do we have an update on where we think <laughs> D Hop's gonna go? No, I, I I don't know. There hasn't been much uh, movement. One guy has four quarterbacks. What's he doing? He's taking all the quarterbacks. Y you do get to start a quarterback in one of your flex spots. No, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, we're we're now officially in the world of quarterbacks that might not actually play, right? Yeah, I mean Ryan Tannehill. Oh, you know who you need to star right now? Put Baker in your queue right now. Yeah, he's in. Okay. <laughs> so is Desmond Ritter, who I want nothing to do with. Really? But. Why are you so down on Desmond Ritter? Uh, is it just it, just being my natural enemy? You have to be against the Falcons. <laughs> I I think it's just I he just ends up unfortunately in that uh in that same queue, you know. Queue of guys, but he is a guy going into a second year in an offense with some weapons around him. I guess I just lump him in with Kyle Pitts. <laughs> okay, that, that's. <laughs> do you have any running backs yet? Do I have any running backs? Um, I don't have a running. No, back yet. no running backs. Unless you count Lamar Jackson and Daniel Jones as running backs, then I have two. Jameer Gibbs available. No, I'm, uh, there's a block of wide receivers I'd much rather have. I'm assuming the ADP and what I'm looking at. Well, Ryan, and you and you should draft Tyler uh, Lockett. Uh, is it time to take him? Uh, maybe. Aaron Jones just went off. I don't get this. Miles Sanders just going off. So I get. Well, th this is what happens with superflex guys that should be drafted like two rounds ahead are now two rounds back because well, the Aaron, extra. But Aaron Jones in general is going this late. Um, I, I don't. Which I, I guess I. If you think that Aaron Rodgers leaving the team is bad for the offense, you're probably correct. But I think also they're gonna like Lafleur is gonna love being a run first team. That that I can that I feel good about. I mean, he he was a run first team before. I think part of the AJ Dillon narrative is because they wanted to become a run first team. Hmm. So I'm the more that I really sit down and think about it, obviously Aaron Rodgers to Jared to Jordan love is going to be a step down, but a Aaron Rodgers is going to like him not being there can only be a positive for the locker room. And I, I do think there's an element of this where the team rallies around whoever is there. That isn't Aaron <laughs> Rodgers Cause he's clearly a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Clearly he makes his teammates feel uncomfortable. Like young kids don't want to do like the kind of drugs that he's doing. Like it, it's like he's graduated like old guy PhD drugs. level drugs. All right, where are we? Where are we firing at now? 
I don't know. You're coming up, Ryan. I know. I'm, I'm, uh, Keenan Allen, uh, Jamison Williams gone. Jamison Williams is. I, I've you been love eye him. On him. You love him. Christian Watson, another guy that you've been pretty high on. Are you? Are, are see? He's a guy I could. I can understand not being as high on. But also, isn't someone going to be a number one wide receiver there, or is it just going to be Aaron Jones? Did we miss by a year on Aaron Jones leads the team in targets? All right, I'm on the clock. Oh boy. Reach to stack. It's a little bit, little baby reach. I'm betting on the other guy I like coming back to me. So now I have Dan Jones, Darren Waller. Mm, this team is being constructed very nicely. And just like I predicted, Desmond Ritter falls to my lap. All right. I'm going to be try try and get excited about Desmond. Ritter. I like that you're on the Desmond Ritter train now. Because he a lot of big weapons don't have to be the most accurate guy. He w he is a, a verified lawn chair, as Colby will tell you. But he at least played in a pro style offense in college. He at least has some experience uh, slinging the rock. And I, I I'm with I'm standing by Arthur Smith. Guy's got a plan. All right, I'm I'm done with quarterbacks. Oh my goodness, Baker Mayfield, Desmond Ritter, Jimmy G, and Anthony Richardson. This actually has this does have some sort of ceiling. I don't what, feel great about it, ceiling? but. I mean, if Anthony Richardson runs for 900 yards, yeah, all right. Uh, if Desmond Ritter, if that offense actually does work out, requires him playing a little bit, but yeah, I'm with you. This motherfucker took Tyler Lockett from me. That was the guy I was gonna let slide through. Not cool. So I told you you had to take him, Ryan. I I was gonna take him. I don't think either guys either guy gets back to me. I'm actually gonna take a fourth quarterback. These Tampa stacks are interesting. And I'm I'm pissed that uh, someone snagged Kenny Pickett because he was one of the early guys I was thinking of building a, a best ball team around because you can get George Pickens, you can get Deontay Johnson. Andrew Rob talking shit in the chat about Ritter versus Mariota. My stance on Mariota was that he was 100 percent going to start the season. Uh, I didn't realize he was going to quit on the team and then bring his quitter juice so that's to, to like the Eagles, but. Uh, Chris Godwin, Marquise Hollywood Brown off the board. And by the way, I took Sam Howell as my fourth quarterback. Okay. I'm not worried about Brissett. You don't sign Brissett to be a starter. You sign Brissett because he's a great veteran backup. Someone already drafted Kyle Pitts. Yeah, a while ago. <laughs> Come on, Sean. people are hilarious. Pay attention. You're you're too low on Kyle Pitts. Didn't we have this conversation last year? Yeah, because you we, he was a first round pick. He's not gonna he's not a first round pick anymore. We're in the we're he got drafted probably in the sixth round. Well, this is this is super flex, right? Seventh it's round. Not even worth I don't discussing think, rounds in this. I don't think I don't think tight ends are affected that that greatly by super flex. You don't? No. You're crazy. What do you mean? Kelsey still went in the first. Okay, Dallas Goddard went in the so end you, of you the eighth round. Slightly depressed, whereas like Andrews doesn't go until the fifth, but some of these guys are going about the same time they would. Goddard in the in the eighth round. When 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 was he going in the other best ball drafts? Maybe the seventh. It's at least one full round difference. I think maybe for some guys. I don't think for these like middle tier guys. I think people are still gonna snap them up. Speaking of snapping it up, have you got your sword vitality yet? Well, if you haven't, what are you doing? You're missing out. Sword vitality helps you in so many ways. Our horse that was dominating, swing your sword. Shout out to sword vitality. If you're swinging your sword in your in the bedroom, you want maximum sword strength. Maximum sword. You don't want a soft sword. You can't no. do battle in a soft sword. Imagine big trip to Las Vegas, talking to some ladies. You're, you're dealing with the soft sword. No one wants that. When you unsheath your sword, you want to know that your sword. Um, yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. If you're one of those guys, you want to make sure uh, your sword is operating at peak efficiency. Sword vitality helps you in a ton of ways. It increases blood flow to help you thrive as a man in the bedroom. It can also increase your stamina. Again, you don't have to hide it. You can be proud of it. Unsheath your sword and head to swordvitality.com. Use promo code SGPN for a nice discount at checkout. That's swordvitality.com, promo code SGPN. Sean George pick and I'm really uh this Gordo 
Gordo? Is that like a pay, paying homage to the great uh, Mighty Ducks coach, uh, Gordon Bombay? Maybe. Oh, Gordo. I thought, I thought it was just like a name for like a fat Mexican guy. Ah, oh, yeah. It's you know you, we both could be right. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm kind of enjoying his team here. He's uh, other than the Aaron Rodgers pick, but he d- he just completed a Kenny Pickett, uh, George Pickens stack, oh, which okay. I would imagine in these formats is going to be a very nice thing to do. All right. You're on the clock, Ryan. What are you doing? You know, I, I I wonder if this is the wrong thing to do, but I'm gonna first stack Sam Howell with Jihad Dots and a guy we both liked last year playing in DFS was always cheap, always seemed to be a target around the end zone. Yeah, ever since I read the uh King King of the Nerds, Leone put out a, a long ass thesis on the like well, it's not his thesis or his his work is not even done. It's a four part mini series on best ball, but the stacking portion he really kind of just hard affirmation that stacking is important. I just did a little uh, running back uh, piling up here. I got Rashad White, my first running back, and then Joe Mixon. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I kept looking at him. It's a little. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. Like what the story is. Oh, who's their running back? Yeah, and and I think there's a real like negative narrative against him talking about how much, how many yards he had before contact. Just kind of really strong shade throwing session on the internet. Um. All right. I don't have a running back yet, and I hate to. I hate to make my first running back an eagle, but we've we've discussed the Rashad Penny angle. Always been a fan of him since he went to San Diego State. Shout out to our gals. It's best ball. Needing to pop up every three weeks. <laughs> That's going to be the strategy on on uh, on quarterback. So roster breakdown so far, Sean. Four quarterbacks, one running back, four wide receivers, one tight end. Love that I have quarterbacks that are going to be playing and putting up points. That's different. I've had too many teams like your team where you're just laying and praying. <laughs> All right, let's look at my team. I got AR 15, Jimmy G, Desmond Ritter, Baker Mayfield, Rashad White, <laughs> Joe Mixon, uh, Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith, Travis Kelsey. Who else are we targeting? It's a very confusing team. I'm just trying to I'm I'm just trying to find some stacks here. I'm doing the thing where I just uh, star all of the receivers for my quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean it doesn't make sense, especially at this this point in the draft. I got that sweet Baker Mayfield Rashad White check down sack going. I don't hate it. No, Although I mean, Baker's not a check down guy, I, I, I would be a little concerned about that. Will Levis just drafted by Andrew Robin, the 10th round. All right. Uh, by the way, you, you be very careful when going on the internet and talking shit about Will Levis. Kentucky fans are very <laughs> proud. Uh, <clears throat> I, when I, I posted the video of him eating a banana without the peel or without taking off the peel. And the response I got from one guy was basically like, well, wow, that, that's like 10 months old loser. That's two years old loser. We all know that already. Mm, I'm gonna guess that most of the world doesn't actually know this. No, it went it went no, viral I, I again. I, but the but the point being, let's highlight reasons why Will Levis is a fucking weirdo. All the narrative stuff about him maybe not being good in the locker room, and may, maybe there was more to his play that got him sent packing at Penn State. I don't know if you saw the quote I put out. Will Levis believed he always had the talent; he just needed the platform to prove it. He called his football team a platform, Sean. <laughs> That is that not concerning? Running back alert, running back run is happening. Oh wow, Damian Harris goes. Brian Robinson off the board. And we can see what kind of guy Andrew Robb is now. Also, he's got DeAndre Swift on this team. He's got Alvin Kamara on this team. Will Levis. Uh, Alvin Kamara is gonna miss uh is he gonna miss uh, it's pretty late though. I I guess there's a there's a dimin- point of diminishing returns where it's worth it. Uh yeah, I still only have one. Oh, AJ Dillon was in the queue. Don't love missing out on that one. So who fills in for Alvin Kamara while he's out? Obviously Jamal Williams, right? Yeah. 
I'm oh, and Gordo takes Rashad Bateman from me. Damian Harris off the board. He's uh obviously he's really fun. Are we worried at all about uh, retaliation against uh, Rashad Bateman after talking shit about the GM? And Odell Beckham goes. How am I supposed to stack Lamar Jackson with you assholes out here snaking me? I I think I have to continue taking running backs. Where do we think Anthony Richardson goes to the Colts? <sighs> Titans, maybe. Really? I I I would be shocked if the Titans took him. What's the story with Dalvin Cook? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's he's really falling off here. Oh, Samaj P. Ryan, Ryan. Yeah, he's I, my I, guy. I have. He's my second running back. I need to load up on guys who have a workload. Not not a ton out there that's making me feel great. I grab me some Kenny Gainwell. So Rob's Andrew Rob's saying that they're not like he's not a lock to miss time. I I don't know. Everything I've read legally states that he's it's pretty I mean, unless it gets pushed out a whole nother season, it sounds like he's gonna miss time. Could happen. Uh, if you watch the video, I mean it's it's not the uh it's not exactly a dude um you know, it's it's a bunch of Imagine needing help as a football player to take on a smaller dude. That's all I would say. Drafting Jacoby Myers. Seems Ugh. like uh Ugh. might be able to pair up pretty nice with Jimmy G. Ugh. Ugh. Got a horrible taste in my mouth after that one. I mean, I guess it's the right move. Yeah, you're betting on, on. G- you're betting on Jimmy G though, and Desmond Ritter on the same team. Feels like a long shot parlay. <laughs> all right, we need we need more running backs. You know what else we need, Ryan? In our life, talk of five. That's right. Again, we're trying to find our perfect match for fantasy football for our our teams here for our best ball uh, leagues. But again, what if you're uh, what if you're trying to find that special gal? Again, uh, worst part about dating is those first dates. It's super awkward. You're trying to figure out the. Uh, you're just there's a lot of awkward questions to begin with, and again, you know. I, uh, Talkify does all the heavy lifting. Like they literally interview them ahead of time, get rid of the crazy ones, find the great match for you. Again, confidence is key. So it's great going into a date knowing that there's already been some screening happening. Talkify again. Look at their stats. Talkify. 80% of their clients met their person within the first 12 matches. 80%. Uh, within the first 12 matches. Again, they do the screening, the background checks, the video interviews. They do all the heavy lifting. You just come in there and uh, the fun part. That's where you, t- well, that's where you take off. Talkify is offering our listeners 20% off when you become a client over at talkify.com slash S G P N that's T a W K I F Y.com slash S G P N for 20% off. When you become a client talkify.com slash S G P N. And I love that they call it being a client, not a customer, not a subscriber, a client classy. We need to change that for us. Yes. Make sure you smash that button and become a client, <laughs> become a client of the sports gambling podcast today, man. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have so many uh, receiver <laughs> bullets here. Yeah. What, what's your t- What's your breakdown so far? Got four quarterbacks, hate them all. Three running backs, four receivers, one tight end. The, the nice thing about drafting Travis Kelsey is you only need two tight ends, and your second tight end can be your last pick, in my mind. Just some sort of stack, right? Yeah. Oh, speaking of tight ends, there goes Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. <laughs> Although, Sean, there is a tight end that you tend to like that maybe you should grab a little earlier. Chig? No, oh, shh. It's top of the queue. He's never going to make it back to me. Why not? Seven picks away. He's a tight end. Most but how many out- how many games is he gonna outscore Travis Kelsey? Uh are you saying like just in terms of value? Yeah, yeah. that's that's fair. But uh, you also it, it's not bad to have someone that at least has a ceiling. He maybe he accidentally pops into your flex from time to time. I I mean if I sort by tight ends right now. There, there's still a hand. I guess there's a couple of guys that could be regular guys, but Chig seems like Chig seems like the only guy left that could really jump up just from like a athletic profile standpoint. And what if it's a AR 15 throwing him the ball, Sean, 
Come on. Build these imaginary stacks in your head. So I don't ready. know. I just don't see Tennessee getting another guy that's like like Malik Willis. I feel like they're probably pissed after that. Oh, I think it's unfair to to a. I mean, as much as I dislike Anthony Richardson, I do think he has a better arm than Malik Willis. But like Malik Willis in game play looked horrible. He looked horrible. Like his arm didn't look. But you thought AR fifteen looked good. I think. Arm talent wise, like the the zip on the ball, like that he 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 has a better chance to me at making an NFL throw. All right, where are we at? I'm coming up here. I still don't understand why Leonard Fournette is drafted so late. Like you know he's gonna end up on some team, right? I I would think so. I would think so. What's the oh, I was I was just about to ask about Antonio Gibson because he's obviously in my queue. Uh, you know, need, need a need a little bit of running back help. There are some receivers on the board I like, but I really like. I mean, I've heard some people comp him to Austin Eckler. Jalen Warren is definitely really? a fun play. Um, you know, we'll see it, right? There was it seemed like Najee Harris was in and out of the doghouse or in and out of some house last year. And it seemed like they really liked Jalen Warren. So happy to grab Just him. Just took Alec Pierce. Classic pick by you. Really? I don't Feels a little bit like the uh, the old reliable. Although uh, I mean, he could be he could be a guy again, second year guy. Maybe makes a little bit of a jump up with Anthony Richardson. Look out, Jacoby oh. Brissett, Gardner Minshew are being drafted in in fantasy formats. That's where we're at. Why? Well, yeah, super flex, baby. Drafted Leonard Fournette. Oh. you don't like Leonard Fournette, right? I just I I don't want to be rude. I. Who knows? It's kind of like drafting Zeke, in my opinion, at this point. Really? But he didn't play for the Cowboys. All right. Um, Tim Patrick, you've been trying to hype him up. I do like Tim Patrick. Just looking at my ADP stuff, see if I have to reach on any of these motherfuckers right now. No. Ryan, have you drafted Richie James yet? No, no. I do think he's going to be a good play. All right, where is he? Gonna double up on Chargers deep threats. Got Mike Williams and Josh Palmer now. What round are we in? Fourteen. What do we have? Twenty. I really hate this team. Watch, this is gonna be the best scoring team. (laughs) That's how it works. All right, so Chig still on the board, my boy Chig. Will he be there when you get back? And if so, will you take him? If he's there, I might, I might have to reach. Oh, oh and he just goes. Gordo just guy. goes. Gordo's listening. <laughs> Gordo's one hundred percent listening. He's in. He's in. The fix is in. Zeke is available. He's available in real life too. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor Zeke. He can't find a team. Kenny Galladay or Zeke? Who gets a team first? Still asking that question. How many weeks will I have to ask that question? Uh, Jake has a, a good question here. Better year, Chig or Dolchich? It's a horrible question. It's oh, Chig by God. a mile. Dolchich is going to lose time to Albert L. If you're not deep enough into that, I mean, it, it's very clear that Hackett or someone on the staff did not like Albert L. And he seems very optimistic about the future with Sean Payton. Mm. I like, like to me, it's a. I'm out on the Denver tight end situation until I see something. Yeah, Andrew Rob just echoed me in the chat. I I think you Dolchich 100% was a Hackett guy or someone on Hackett staff. So I would I would steer clear of that. I see DJ Chark just came off the board. He's a he's certainly a fun. I, is he going to be the number one receiver in Carolina? Well, if not him, who? That, that that's that's the point. We're in the 14th round, Sean. Maybe DeAndre Hopkins ends up there. No, right. I do have Hopkins. I w- I do wonder where he ends up. That would be an interesting location. Where do you think he wants to go? Baltimore. Uh, yeah, I I <laughs> I thought the Ravens had a decent chance. Maybe they Not shot anymore, their right? wad with uh, Odell. I mean, they they just spent like what what the cap number this year is going to be like fourteen million or whatever. It feels like if you're spending that on Odell, you're not coming back to dip into the. If you're a smart GM, though, the, the the cap doesn't slow you down. You figure out a way. 
Can't wait for that to end. What do you mean? Oh, I, I Howie Roseman's like, on a great run. I um, keep saying like, oh, dead cap's gonna kill you. Howie I mean, Roseman has not had to. I mean, essentially, it's Howie Roseman's been operating with a rookie quarterback deal, and that's that's why you can carry dead cap, and that that's the bottom line. And so we'll see what happens with Hertz getting signed. No, I mean they they got out of the. I mean they dealt with it when they had um, Carson Wentz on that mega deal. For how many years did they have Carson Wentz on the mega deal? Uh, two or three. Really? Yeah. Mm, all right. Yeah, he resigned in 2018, paid him a shit ton of guaranteed money, and he weaseled out of it. And he got picks for Carson Wentz. You got to just trust in Howie, right? Yeah, he just didn't get to the end. Like typically, those quarterback deals are like staggered in a way where they're more back loaded than front loaded. So I, I'm just saying, like, let's see what happens when Hertz gets the deal. They're they're it's very good problem. To they have. have a very high percentage of dead cap right now. Yeah, and they did last year. Yeah, no, I know, and they still have a rookie quarterback deal. I, I'm just saying, like, it's their dead cap. I, I would have to go back and look at what their dead cap numbers were back in 2018 or whenever they started to sign Carson once, but I would have guessed that they're not this high. There goes Tim Patrick. Damn it. Zeke went. Congrats to Zeke. How? He's not on a team. <laughs> He is a tough. He is a tough draft for not what, being on. What team. round did he go? Sixteenth, fifteenth. Oh boy. What if Zeke starts working out? I mean, okay. Cream Hunt. Where does he end up? I don't know. We we love Kareem Hunt here on the program. All right now, I think it's just time to. Darius Slate and loading up the big guns. Just standing on my opinion that he's going to be the number one wide receiver on the team. Wendell Robinson's not going to be healthy to start the year. I don't understand why people are drafting him ahead of Slayton. Just took Michael Carter. That's a good pick. Yeah. I still only have three running backs. I guess I should have kept the eye on the prize. I have five. Do I need a six? Mm, probably not. I like Shahid for New Orleans. Could I, have a couple of massive games. I need a running back. Do I take a rug, a rookie or do I take an established guy? Hmm. Boom. Classic case. Guy took a pay cut. He'll still be there. Gus Edwards on the team, Sean, in case you were wondering. <laughs> wow. One of Kramer's guys. This is the year that Gus Edwards pays off. Any other deep, deep guys? I, the running back situation. I mean, I know we, we've discussed Pierre Strong a bunch, but the running back situation really gets dicey here. A lot of decent handcuffs. It's at the part in the season though where people aren't looking to handcuff. Ryan, uh, top ten uh, NFL athlete Cordero Patterson available. Still there, yeah. How many touchdowns did he have last year? Ten. Just sitting here in the in the sixteenth round, ten touchdown guy. Shame on everyone. Oh, we spoke him into cereal. Took him. Cereal knows good value. Yeah. All right, I got some interesting stacks here. So I have Lamar, Dan Jones, Geno Smith, Sam Howell, uh, Rashad Penny, Samaj P. Ryan, Jalen Warren, Gus Edwards, DK Metcalf, Mike Williams, DeAndre Hopkins, Jahad Dotson, Quinton Johnston, Joshua Palmer, and Darius Slayton. Oh, I serial serials backing up Algier with Cordell Patterson. What a what a backfield that is. Just pure grit, determination, hard work. What positions you got, you need to fill out your roster, Sean. I still only have one tight end. I'm assuming you have the same. Yep. I just have Kelsey. Yeah. I said I, I left him off, but Darren Waller, my tight end guy, Sean hates 
No, I, I don't hate stories him. bullshit. I just don't. I don't project a massive year for him. Hmm. Hendon Hooker goes. Who is a bigger year, Ryan? Uh, Odell Beckham or Darren Waller? Oh, stop it! What do you want it with fantasy points? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, you're not really going to take Odell side of this bet, but I'll happily bet on Darren Waller. There's zero percent chance you would you would take that. All right, so Andrew Robb now takes Isaiah Hodgins. Do you not listen to me? I am plugged in with this. Isaiah Hodgins will not be starting for this team. He will be good. He will be a depth piece. I don't understand. People don't listen to me. John, why don't people listen to me? I know this. I listen. I know a little bit about what the Giants are going to do on offense this year. Isaiah Hodgins will be a piece. They signed him very cheap. And he did a good job last year, but he's slow as shit. And he's a replacement level guy. Shout out to the Beavers. By the way, Sean, the Giants' entire offense is out training in Arizona. What are the Eagles up to? I don't know. Mickey Just Mouse planning Club on, planning on another losing season. Mickey Mouse. Oh, the Eagles <laughs> are planning on a losing season. So it's, it's sarcasm, right? Oh, okay. Nerve, you're letting the nerves say, Oh, Mike White go, Sean. You should Ooh, that's <laughs> fun. Start queuing him up on your shit quarterback teams. All right. So is four is four running backs enough? Probably not. Right. Why didn't you draft Isaiah Likely to pair with Lamar? Well, uh, he's still in my queue. Why are you talking about? Oh, it's on one on the clock. Yeah. Uh I don't think Isaiah likely the, is the play. Oh, Andrew Robb is saying he's taking that bet. Hodgins is a starter. I like this. This is like you going up against uh, Ian Rappaport. Sure. It's going to be Slayton. It's going to be Sterling Shepard, and it's going to be uh, Paris Campbell. Will be the like the three wide. Just took Russell Gage pair with Baker. Matt Collins and, and and also Andrew Rob like gr- it would be great to know where you're getting this data from. I, I took Ch- Chuba Hubbard by the way. Oh, nice. It does seem. I mean, so uh, I mean, you Frank Reich on the Eagles for a little bit, but it does seem like people are just like, oh yeah, no, he's 100 percent going to like bell cow it to Miles Sanders. I don't. Has Miles Sanders ever been a guy that can? I, I don't know. It just doesn't strike me as the most likely outcome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, was he a bell cow in Philly this year? Kind of, but there was he had some help. Right. I mean, I, I that's probably where he'll end up. I don't know if any running back is really a bell cow. I mean, like who in the NFL is it's just that guy? Uh from a fantasy perspective, I and mean, then like the guys at the top of the board, obviously. But like I love Miles Sanders' value, but I also think for being the number two guy, like a lot of the situations where the number two guy is going to get some work, they've already gone. Is my point. And Carolina is not getting that same treatment. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I I think it's people just probably aren't super stoked about that offense in general. They're probably factoring in that it, Matt Rule's wife was the reason that Chuba Hubbard's on the team. <laughs> Ryan, you miss you didn't comment on my uh, Desmond Ritter Matt Collins stack. I like it. Um, I don't know if it's the the guy I would stack with, but I I certainly could see Matt Collins and Desmond Ritter becoming uh, fast friends. Who would you stack with at this point in the draft? No, no, this is this is good. I, honestly, Ritter's probably pretty stackable with the, with the exception of Pitts in London. If you want to just go on the everyone else, I'd have to pull up who's still available. But let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm. Wow, they're they're uh, they're Matt Collins is the only guy with the pulse that's left. But all right, so we oh I and I should have taken Hunter Renfro. Drake too. London, Kyle Pitts, only pass catchers, and then Matt Collins. Scotty Miller's on the team. You like Scotty Miller? Right? And what happened to? Am I crazy? Did they not? Oh man, they're they're receiving cores. Unless Underdog needs an update. Frank Darby, Josh Ali. Damien, oh, he's not even on the team. Rashawn Henry, like I follow football pretty closely. I'm having a hard time recalling who Rashawn Henry is. Jared Bernhardt. These are the pass catchers. Love the Matt Collins play. <laughs> I'm saying, who who else are you taking that as Why a host that isn't Drake London? 
yeah, I guess they had some other guys on their team last year. I guess I'm going to pull up the hour lads depth chart. I almost don't, don't believe some of this nonsense. Let me know when I'm on the clock. Okay. Thanks. You notice Ryan though, uh, Google Chrome, your tab will tell you how many picks away you are. Got it. I see that as well. Oh, okay. just in case you need just uh, your yeah, teamwork sometimes can make the dream work. <laughs> Uh, oh, f- all right. Let's see here. So according to the depth chart, it's going to be a three wide of Drake London, Matt Collins, Scotty Miller, Josh Ali backing up the slot, Bernhardt backing up Matt Collins and Frank Darby backing up Drake London. Let's see what's uh, you know what? I bet you Andrew just use it. Oh yeah. Look at this. Isaiah Hodgins starting. So if you're looking at a depth chart where like for this, the one I'm looking at, for example, Isaiah Hodgins, Paris Campbell, Wendell Robinson is the starters. Darius Slayton will be a starter. That's just incorrect. A what B Paris Campbell, almost certainly going to be seeing a lot of time in the slot early in the season with Sterling Shepard on the outside. Again, Isaiah Hodgins plays special teams. He's a great team guy. Uh, they got him on the cheap. That's why he's on the team. He will not be starting. And by the way, they picked up Jamison Crowder too, who I, I don't know if we'll make the team, but he's, he kind of pencils in as the backup slot guy. All right. Giants do have Pimpleton. If you remember from uh, hard knocks on Detroit, excited for that guy to get some punt return work. Ooh, Noah fan goes. That was my sneaky backup tight end that I was going to grab to really? stack with Gino. I don't know Over why he, Isaiah likely. Why That's is he crazy. going? So, well, Noah Fant doesn't have anyone in front of him. Why is he going so late? Uh, Cause they, they, they I don't mean, like him. No, I, I, they're, uh, they have other guys. Yeah. Still though, pretty late in the draft. I mean, I would be all over uh, Isaiah likely over. I mean, uh, Colby Parkinson's list as their starter. And then they also have will Disley as well. Yeah. Depth charts are bullshit at this point. But I, I'm with I'm you. Just I, telling you. I why still like. Gonna... I, I'm. I, I'm not arguing against Isaiah Likely at this point. I'm just a little shocked. That's all. I thought no. No offense. Been going to the end of the draft. And and honestly, if you talk to Daniel Bellinger's dad, he's going to start over Darren Waller. So. I mean, no offense. I think they brought him in with some hype, and he underperformed. All right, we got how many picks left? Just one, two. He did have four touchdowns. So I. All right, I have five running backs and eight receivers. Do I go with a sixth running back or a ninth receiver, Sean? It's a tough call. And this cocksucker took Isaiah Likely because you're running your fucking mouth over there like a goddamn hippopotamus. Well, I mean, Isaiah Likely is a good pickup. Well, yeah, and you've been talking about it. Now look at he's gone. No, so you now, should have taken him last round. Now I got to take some bullshit. Could have had an awesome stack with Lamar. Now I got to take some bullshit. No, you're too busy drafting useless Giants receivers. Oh, you took Kate out and just to spite me, huh? Nothing to do with you. Just trying to build the best team. I'm going with Samir White. Yeah, he's in the queue too. He's kind of an interesting like last. And I have Jimmy G. So he was going many rounds earlier than this last time. And by the way, I'm not going to draft him because he doesn't make sense for this roster. I think I think I'm going to end up taking another running back here. But uh, Richie James is going to score points for the Chiefs. So do we like Albert O, or should I go with Austin Hooper as my stack? Uh, go if you if you can get a stack, go the go the stack round. Yeah, Austin Hooper. I think with no Darren Waller, like what are they going to do at tight end? Raiders. He's on the Raiders now. Well, they, yeah, I mean, all right. We we've been talking about this guy a they lot. They have Austin Hooper and OJ Howard. All right, last pick of the draft for me is going to be Pierre Strong. All right, so Lamar Jackson, Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, Sam Howell, Rashad Penny, Sam Samaje P Ryan, Jalen Warren, Gus Edwards, Chuba Hubbard, Pierre Strong, DK Metcalf, Mike Williams, DeAndre Hopkins, Jahan Dotson. Quentin Johnston, like his uh, opportunity as a rookie, Joshua Palmer, Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell. With Darren Waller and Cade Otten. Let's go. 
Quarterbacks: Anthony Richardson, Jimmy G, Desmond Ritter, Baker Mayfield. Running backs: Rashad White, Joe Mixon, Kenny Gainwell, Leonard Fournette, Michael Carter, Zamir White. Receivers: This is where I really do my work. Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith, Jacoby Myers, Alec Pierce, Rashid Shahid, uh, Russell Gage, Matt Collins, Travis Kelsey, Austin Hooper. Arguably my worst team, but I bet you you know then it never works out like that. Russell Gage is very interesting. I mean, the Russell Gage. Uh, I mean, it, it hinge. It probably hinges on one of those guys getting dealt, but also maybe not because they did. He did have some games this year. I don't know. That Tampa team could also just be a complete dumpster fire. Yeah. Uh, we'll and we'll see. Maybe Kyle Traskell's under the job. I, I don't know. It's it's gonna get interesting there in uh, down in Tampa Bay. Thank you as always for tuning in the Sports Gambling Podcast. That subscribe button. We will be back later today talking NBA playoffs. The playing games are here. Hell yeah! Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Did that sound authentic, Sean? No, not at all. Kramer, let it. Right.